It is finally springtime, and that means it is perfect weather for some front porch sitting. So this week I made myself a glider so that I can have a smooth and comfortable seating option on these beautiful mornings or evenings. If you're interested in making your own, I have a set of templates and plans for this one. Let me show you the building process. I'm building my glider from Western Red Cedar, which is not only a beautiful wood in color, but is also naturally rot resistant. So it's always my go-to for outdoor projects. Find a link below to locate Western Red Cedar near you. Straight from the store, cedar comes smooth on one side and rough on another. To save on sanding time later, I pulled out my Triton thickness planer and ran my boards through to knock down the rough side. After getting one side smooth, I put my mobile stand away and headed to the table saw to rip down all of my boards. I put together a cutlass before getting started on this project, so I was able to cut all my boards needed at one time. Once I was done with my straight stock, I next moved to making all the needed curve pieces. For this, I used a set of templates. These are MDF cutouts that I place on top of my board, then trace. From there, I took the part over to the bandsaw and cut it out. After cutting the rough shape there, I did all of the fine tuning, cutting right up to my pencil line and my Triton oscillating belt sander. If you don't wanna mess with the two-step process, another option is to use a flush trim bit in the router table to come away with a perfect replica of the template. As I was finishing parts, I would stack them all on my Armor mobile workbench to next take over to my Triton router table. Triton? To next take over to my Triton router table. This bench is great for not only working on, but also moving things from station to station. You can see I've been wearing my stealth respirator throughout all of this process, especially with cedar, I never work without it. This one's not only comfortable, but it does a great job at expelling the heat as I'm breathing. At the router table, I put in a round over a bit and ran my parts through to soften all of the edges. This is a subtle thing that really stands out in the end when it all gets put together. That's all the parts cut that will make up the bench of the glider. I'm gonna save the base for later on. So next is on to assembly. I started with grabbing the footer and two vertical upright parts and attached them together. I'm using a spoil board under my piece so that I can drill directly through my two pieces without getting into my workbench. This also prevents tear out on the backside. After drilling in the first hole, I placed in a carriage bolt to keep the holes aligned. I also then used a speed square to square up the two components. Then you can also throw in one of those to keep things together while you drill and place a second bolt location. I repeated the same process when moving on and attaching the back parts to the seat parts. Each set requires two bolts, and while you can drill in both at the same time, it's best practice to drill in one, place a bolt, then drill in the second. This keeps things from getting misaligned and struggling to place two bolts at once. With this project going outside, I'm using galvanized everything. This will prevent it from rusting out. However, I couldn't find galvanized lock nuts, only regular nuts. The reason I wanted lock nuts is because they have a layer inside to keep the nut from backing out over time. And with this project being in motion, you definitely want something locking. So to make sure the nuts don't back out over time, I'm using a thread locker made by DAP. This is a simple step that involves just squeezing a bit of the gel on the threads of the bolt before tightening down on it. And that's all that's needed to create a vibration proof lock. Okay, and now that I have a few parts put together, I can join them together to make up the bones of the bench. I spaced the seat back assembly out evenly across the footer and started attaching. I attached each one with two exterior grade screws, checking with the speed square as I was moving along to make sure things were nice and square before I attached. I also pre-drilled here as I'm going into the end grain. Pre-drilling helps prevent the wood from splitting. Next was to attach the slats. Since I made sure the front was square as I was building, I started at the back with the first slat, using a tape to get the parts spaced to the same dimension they were at the front, which just ensures they're square. Then I worked my way to the front, not then having to worry about squareness as everything's now locked into place. To make attaching these slats quick, I'm using a spacer, two actually, and also a brad nailer instead of screws. 
Screws do work great, but are just more time consuming. If you go with them, then be sure to pre-drill to prevent splitting the bottom or back piece the slat is being attached to. If you go with nails, then just be sure to buy galvanized. If you don't use galvanized, the nails will rust out very quickly once the glider is outside and in the weather. I absolutely love how quickly this thing takes shape. Okay, I'm not done with the body yet. Let's attach the arms. The main thing to pay attention to here is the arm is attached level to the body. I first throw in two screws to attach the front of the arm to the vertical upright. Now I can place a level on the arm to find where it needs to be attached at the back. And that is the top bench portion done. Let's get started on building the base for it to glide on. After cutting my pieces to their needed length, I started by rounding over the bottom edge of each leg. I traced a curve from something round, then cut it out over at the bandsaw. I cleaned up the cut with my Triton oscillating belt sander, making sure I held my piece flat against the deck, then pulled it around against the direction of the belt. To attach it, I first applied some outdoor wood glue to the front side, then clamped it in place. Here I used a level to make sure this part was plumb before I attached it using two screws. Next, I repeated with the back leg. However, this isn't plumb, so I just made sure the angle on the top was seated flush to the underside of the arm. After getting one side complete, I moved the bench to span across my armor table so that I could have access to the other side and repeated. These four legs are what will span down to the base to let it glide back and forth. Next, I started building the frame that will be attached to these legs. I started with the bottom of the base. Since this will be in contact with the ground, I drew on a cutout portion to create two feet for this part. I used the bandsaw to cut it out, then I used my Triton spindle sander to clean up the corners. While the oscillating belt sander can also be turned into a spindle sander, I still keep this spindle sander on my bench along with it so that I can have each one dedicated to their tasks. Now the way that assembly will look for the base is very simple. It's just four parts, essentially making a box. There are plenty of ways to join these parts to make it strong and supportive, but I'm going to be using a mortise and tenon method called beadlock from Rockler. They make this jig here that attaches to your piece of wood and allows you to drill in a series of holes. Then they also make a tenon that fits into these holes that gives you a connection between two parts. It's pretty neat, huh? Let me show you the details. When I laid out my parts, I used a speed square to draw a line from one part to the next. This way I could take one part at a time and clamp it in my Triton Super Jaws. This is a hold down device so that I can next set the jig in place and line up its center line to my pencil line. Once I clamped it down, now I'm ready to drill in the three holes at the top using the guides. After all three are done, I can quickly unlock two knobs on the front and slide the guide over to position B. This halfway closes one of the holes and allows me to drill in the far left two. Let me take off the jig, take it out of my jaws, and you can see I'm left with the receiving mortise. Once I repeated the process on all my remaining parts, I was able to apply some outdoor wood glue into the mortise and hammer in a Rockler provided tenon. Now the parts can fit together like a puzzle piece. Simple and easy. This beadlock system is a great alternative to the expensive mortise and tenon tools on the market. And if you're interested in it, then I have left you a link in the description of the video. Okay, just about done. Just a few more finishing touches for the base. First, I rounded over the edges to soften the look. Then I marked off the location of a needed front stretcher. For strength, I decided to dado this in. And I marked the location off with this speed square, then used a straight bit in my router to cut it in. And I have marked this location in the plan, so if you wanna build your own, you can cut this in as an individual part rather than one big assembly like me. I used more wood glue to attach this stretcher. Using a brad nail on each side to pin the stretcher in place so that I can have both hands free to then pre-drill and drive in a few screws to attach it. With that in place, I flipped the unit on its back to make attaching the back stretcher a little easier. After applying glue, I again used a few screws. At this point, my mom had stopped in to bring me lunch and decided I needed some help. Are you holding it for me? I'm gonna hold it for you. Does it need to be held? I think so. Oh, 
so she held my part in place while I drilled a hole for the glider hardware. You can find this hardware at Rockler and it's specific glider hardware that you simply drill four holes for, then attach with a bolt. I again used DAP's thread locker, then a ratchet wrench to tighten down on the nut and washer. A ratchet is actually my mom's favorite, so she asked if she could take over this part. And who am I to tell my mama no? Now we just need to join the two together. I set the base on the floor of my shop first, then with the help of my mom, set the bench on top. That's another great quality about Western Red Cedar. It is extremely lightweight. I can easily pick up the bench by myself. Now, in order for the glider hardware to work, all four bolts needed to be attached in their corresponding holes in the legs. I held up one side as my mom pushed through the bolts on hers. Then, after she put on a washer and nut, I repeated on my side. And voila! Now, let's give it a spin. Of course, anywhere I go, the pups wanna go. And then anywhere we go, my mom wants to go. With it tested out and proved to work, the very last thing I did was apply a sealant on it. If you leave cedar roll, it will actually patina to a nice weathered gray. But I like to apply a finish made by Total Boat that is a varnish tinted in the color amber. However, it is worth noting it comes in clear as well. It's a durable marine grade finish that is fast drying, easy to apply, and also easy to maintain. It has a built-in UV protection that won't crack or yellow over time, so it's ideal for anything outdoor. Also, it's water-based, so not only does that mean low VOCs, but it also cleans up easily after the job is done. I am absolutely thrilled to have this glider added to my seating options here at the house. Total, it only took me two days to build, so not bad considering how many years I'm gonna enjoy sitting on it. If you've been wanting a glider, then check out my website as I have plans and templates for this one. Or if you want plans and templates for other outdoor seating options, such as a porch swing, folding out a Rondack chair, picnic table, I have that and many more. I have left you links to everything I use down in the description if you have any questions. I really hope that you've enjoyed it and I'll see you in my next project, guys. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you would like another project to tackle, don't forget that I have templates for this folding Adirondack chair. Of course, it's an Adirondack chair, but then you can tuck it away into this nice sleek profile for either storing it during winter or just simply after a party. You can click right here to get your templates.